So programming assignment number two builds on what you did for programming assignment number one with your simple array class. So uh, here's what I recommend you do. First, go back and fix the mistakes you had in assignment one, get it working, push it to your repository, and then we'll grade it in the next couple of days once it's due. And then take assignment number two and then think about your solution to assignment one as you start to do assignment two. It's, it's not entirely different, but it's not identical either. And so what you'll need to do is uh, start with your fixes for assignment number one, because if you don't fix those things, there'll still be mistakes in assignment number two, most likely. And then take a look at the, the readme file and the test program, as we'll talk about here in a second. So this assignment is going to focus on using templates in a very straightforward way, using overloading operators, like operator subscript, and also using const properly. So those are kind of the things we're going to cover in assignment number two. I give you a number of files as before, so you get allocation tracker.cpp and allocation tracker.h, give you some test programs that will both exercise your code and also hopefully show you what you need to implement. And then there's also a bunch of stuff that you're provided just to make things build. Don't modify the stuff that just builds things, otherwise chaos and insanity will ensue. But what you need to do is you'll need to be able to create two files this time. Last time I gave you the the header file for simple array and you've just implemented the .cpp file, this time you're going to have to implement both the .h file and the .cpp file. So I'm going to give you, I'm not going to give you any of those files, you have to implement scoped array.h and scoped array.cpp. And the way you'll do this, of course, is you'll take a look at the test cases and then reverse engineer the interface of that particular class. And uh, as you'll see, the, uh, you'll need to templatize your solution. So you'll use generic types and you'll need to describe or define the scoped array class definition in the .h file. And then you'll do the implementation of the methods in the .cpp file. Uh, don't use the inline keyword for this implementation because it's all gonna be template anyway. And so, you're going to have to make sure that that code gets included. In fact, that's a very important thing to remember. Make sure that your .h file includes the .cpp file. Otherwise, it won't compile. Uh, the other thing to make sure you do is make sure you put gu inclusion guards around the scoped array.h and scoped array.cpp files. And if you want to know what an inclusion guard is, go back and take a look at the many examples of stack we've been implementing stack.h, stack.cpp, and so on, and follow that same pattern that, that, that I do there. And that just guards against multiple inclusion problems. Very good technique to know when you write C++ code. So the real, the real semantics are defined in the test file, especially the, the scoped array test.cpp file. That's what's gonna define what you need to implement in terms of your methods. So again, the, the goal is to take a look at that and then ferret out the interface and the semantics from the tests. Uh, and that's also just a good habit to get into is to, to write tests and then make sure you understand what those tests do. And you'll also see um, how you need to implement the subscript operations, the overloaded subscript operator, operator subscript, and where to put the consts in as well. Um, let's see, I'm gonna, I got rid of this part, this part of the readme file for your solution. We, we I don't want you re-implementing the operator subscript code. Uh, I do want you to re-implement the operator subscript code and not use crazy pointer cast. This is left over from another assignment. Your readme file doesn't say this. Uh, and you'll follow the same process you did before, which is described in your readme file. Namely, what you'll do is when you're done, you'll push your solution to your GitLab repository, and then you have to fill in the Google submission form. And make sure you do that. Do not forget to do that step. It's real easy to do. I'll remind you on Piazza, but don't forget because uh, starting from this assignment, you're losing points if you forget. The first assignment, I didn't take any points off, but make sure you follow those instructions. Okay, um, let's see. Make sure you put all your information, your VO.ID and email and the honor code disclaimer in the, the header files that, and the files that you're modifying. Don't alter the project files or chaos and insanity will ensue. Make sure you abide by the coding standards as we've talked about before. And uh, 
make sure that you have pushed, make sure you've committed everything. This is another common mistake when you add files, when you add a .cpp file or you add a .h file, make sure that you add it to Git so that it shows up in your repository so I can actually look at it. Um, that's another common mistake. A good way to guard against this is to uh, go look at your GitLab account online after you've pushed your code to it and make sure the files that you've thought you added have actually shown up because if you can see it, then I should be able to see it as well. All right, let's go take a look at the scoped array test file. As you can see, there's a bunch of different things that are being tested for here. And this not only will help to uh, make sure your program works, but it'll also be important to tell you what the program should do, what the interface should look like. So obviously you have to write constructors and destruct, uh, constructor and destructor and a get method. And this kind of shows you what is expected from, from that. Uh, you can see that you have to be able to parameterize your scoped array by type name T. And uh, when you make something, if you call get, it returns a null pointer. So that gives you a sense of how you need to initialize things. And um, then again, you know, if you make these calls, you can see that you're going to get zeros. Things are going to start out in some semblance of, of a default initialized state. Also, these are not going to be throwing exceptions. Here we allocate a new array of allocation trackers, which we're going to pass into the constructor. And then you can see that the get method will return the appropriate pointer that we just passed to it, the pointer to the array. I don't think there's a lot of surprises here. Um, again, there's a get array count method and get count method, which will tell you the obvious things based on what you pass in. And uh, then, of course, we've got things like release and swap, which are very similar to what you had done in the previous assignment. So make sure you get that code working correctly. And um, this will tell you how to do all that and what the semantics should be. There's a reset method, which also is going to work very much like what you had in the previous assignment. And let's see, then we're going to have some operators. So as you can see here, the main thing you're going to have to do is implement operator subscript. And you'll have both a const version of that as well as a non-const version of that. And so uh, you'll have to think through how you're going to do const and non-const overloaded operator subscript. And it's, it's not hard. It's just something you have to think about. And if you take a look around, we've, we've talked about this when I implemented my top method for the stack class that we've been using as a running example. So you'll, you'll have something that's kind of along the same lines. Obviously, top is a method, whereas the operator subscript is an overloaded operator. But the same concepts will apply in both cases. And then uh, there's also a bunch of stuff in here that you can use to make sure that you have the right signatures and the right behaviors. So as the comments say for the compilation test, try on commenting these lines and see whether or not your code blows up, which it should. <laughs> and that's because you should be, again, disallowing the copy constructor and disallowing the assignment operator. And you should disallow them in the same way that we disallowed them with uh, the simple array that you did for assignment one, namely making them private and or uh, saying equal delete, which says these are not intended to be implemented. So those are the things you'll need to do for assignment number two. This is really not a very hard assignment either. It's just broadening your understanding a little bit in order to be able to, uh, to handle the generics, in order to be able to handle const and a little bit of operator overloading. The other assignments that we'll get to will be more interesting and we'll start implementing the various constructors like copy constructor and move constructor and so on, but that, that'll come next. The other thing about scoped array is it's actually a very useful little abstraction in its own right. Uh, now in STL, this has been subsumed by things like unique pointer, but uh, before unique pointer came along, scoped array type abstractions were very useful for holding dynamically allocated memory especially arrays in this case, and being able to ensure that they were deleted properly whenever the object that contained them uh, went out of scope. So just a, a good thing to know about, and it'll teach you a bit more about how to do proper resource allocation is initialization or RAII style idioms in C++. Okay, so that's an overview of assignment number two. And that's not that's going to be due very quickly. And then we'll have assignment number three come out about midweek. So be prepared for a, a couple of assignments per week. And uh, 
that that again is by design that the normal class that we would have in a 14 week semester i think has seven six or seven assignments so we're going to have to move quickly in order to be able to make sure that we get through the same amount of material in this class